Hello and welcome. In a recent video, Cody from Cody's Lab and Tom from Explosion and Fire simultaneously put out a video about calcium from animal bones. It was very interesting to see how two talented chemists tackle the same problem independently. As a far less successful YouTuber and a far more analytical chemist, I wanted to add a twist to the story. So in this video, I look at other chemical elements accumulating in animal bones, compare results, and try to draw some conclusions. For that, I'll use my ion chromatograph, XRF, gamma spectroscopy, mass spectrometer, and liquid scintillation counter. My goal is to take amateur scientific analysis a step further and try to give you a better look at the inorganic biology in common food product. Now, at this point, you probably already know bones are mostly made of calcium phosphate. And if you didn't know, now you know. So in this short study, I will analyze some calcium phosphate known as bone ash made from uh, animal bones. Collagen is available as a food supplement made from beef. I will compare its uh, composition with uh, some store-bought uh, chicken, pork, beef, and turkey right on time to ruin Thanksgiving for everyone. The process is the same for all the meat, seasoning, cooking, eating. Once again, sacrificing my body for science. It's a difficult job, but uh, someone has to do it. The leftover bones are once again heated at about a thousand degrees in air to eliminate all organic product and oxidize most metals. Most of the analysis were done on this brittle leftover, but uh, some trace metal needed to be further concentrated for the liquid scintillation counting analysis. For that, I digested these uh, crumbling bones in hydrochloric acid, which I had first checked for trace metal. Once digested, the leftover carbon is filtered out. With heating and stirring, I concentrated my uh, solution before adding some uh, sodium hydroxide to precipitate the calcium. And uh, at this point, if you are interested in recovering the calcium metal, you can pick up uh, Cody's video at about 14 minutes in, or extraction in a higher video at about 16 minutes in. Eh, give or take. Before I get into the results, let me point out that I am not a biologist. In fact, I asked a friend with a biology degree to confirm my uh, results. You can hear Tom McVeigh on his uh, bi-weekly conspiracy podcast, We the Sheeple. And with that out of the way, here are some analytical results. Starting with uh, bone ash, the XRF immediately picked up the large calcium peak on the left, and maybe some heavier metals, it's hard to say with my uh, poor resolution but calcium is definitely present. Along with the expected phosphate, the ion chromatograph also picked up a small amount of chloride. Outside of the uh, background radiations, I could not pick up any radioactivity. Rather than give you a long, boring list of numbers, I put my uh, mass spectrometer data in a more visual Excel chart easier to digest. For some reason, barium seems to be the dominant trace metal present in this uh, bone ash, which is both suspicious and unusual. Strontium is also definitely there, along with uh, traces of yttrium, zirconium, and cesium. Results like this demand actual beef bone analysis. Much like with bone ash, the XRF reveal mostly calcium, and the IC shows some chloride, along with phosphate again. But this time, the mass spectrometer display a higher concentration of strontium versus barium. Since it is part of the bone structure, let's look at collagen. Apparently, the same excess of strontium exists in collagen, and thankfully, no radioisotope were detected, with the noticeable difference of sulfate being the major anion. So maybe the chicken bones have a different story to tell. Just like before, calcium and phosphate show up very clearly with the XRF and ion chromatograph. But with a different diet, zirconium and uh, strontium make a significant comeback in chicken bones. Although higher in chlorides, and with a similar result, Turkey did nothing to clarify this uh, barium and strontium dilemma. So I decided to look at an animal with a different diet. Closely related to human, pigs are a great analog in bone density, weight, diet, etc. And a lot of chlorides show up again, and the same strontium over barium ratio. Although barium makes up a significantly larger portion of the heavy metal found in pork, I found that lead is also accumulating there. The presence of lead is confirmed by the isotopic ratio 
consistent with natural abandons. Now with that much strontium around I had to utilize my liquid scintillation unit and try to detect strontium 90 from cold war nuclear test fallout and other accident. Of course I needed some uh, standard for strontium 90 to calibrate my instrument and some plastic scintillation vials which uh, Perkin Elmer charges 30 cents a piece and refuses to sell to individuals. I had to go through a third party to order these vials. A big thanks to Came Saver. Since I'm involved in decision making for new equipment purchase, I will remember Perkin Elmer sales and customer service. After precipitating most of the alkali earth metal with sodium hydroxide, I concentrated my sample and added about 1 milliliters of this concentrate to 3 milliliters of scintillation cocktail to measure its activity in strontium 90. If you're wondering why the spectrum look like this, the higher energy hump is a contribution from yttrium 90. After gathering the data, all this work revealed no detectable amount of strontium 90 in any of my samples, and this equipment can measure down to a tenth of a Beckwell, which is good news if you enjoy meat. Now to wrap it up, let's uh, compare the concentration of a few metals in different animals. At the exception of bone ash, every single one of them concentrates strontium better than barium in their bones, with the highest concentration found in pork and the lowest in chicken. But chicken also concentrates zirconium far better than any others. Although made from cows, collagen shows some discrepancies when compared to actual beef, especially when looking at strontium for some reason. Looking back at the anion analysis, I think it's worth noting that most metal phosphate found in bones are far less soluble than most chloride and sulfate. It's interesting to see them here, but they don't tell the whole story. Earlier, I mentioned finding lead in pork, and since it's Thanksgiving, here's lead in turkey. I also looked at mercury, cadmium, thallium, and arsenic, and found some compared to the blank in blue here. You're welcome. Let me reassure you, none of these values are anything to be concerned about. Now, why would anyone care about this? Well, studies like this can help refine data on toxicology, workplace exposure, and in the case of a nuclear accident, internal exposure can be calculated with a higher degree of accuracy. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. So, this is probably not your first YouTube video, and you know what to do. Thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you want. Patreon, bell, share. I hope to see you again on the next one, and thank you for watching. Damn it!